Hi, so it's Saturday and I should be studying for an economics final that is six essay questions worth 55% of my grade, but I am taking time to be a real person and not focus on school for a second because I've not done laundry in so long, so I'm trying to clean and do laundry. I'm already deviating from my outline for this video, but I just have to say, shit like a six question test that is worth 55% of your grade makes it hard for me to give professors the respect that they have like earned. I don't know, I've always had problems with authority figures and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> if I think it's a good thing or a bad thing. So you talked about your history project that you're doing about the Stars and Stripes newspaper magazine and I found it really interesting. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about one of my projects. It was like my huge project that I was freaking out about last weekend. I had to do this big paper on a policy that addressed inequality for one of my classes and I picked the Forest Rights Act of 2006 that was in India and it focused on restoring indigenous people's land rights. It was a really cool policy. It was really interesting. It's very different from a lot of other indigenous indigenous people's um, like rights policies because it's very democratized. It gives power, basically complete authority to like local hamlet or village level committees, granting and demarcating lands, allowing states to put in things like roads and schools. It's all at a very localized level so it's a very interesting policy. But to complete the assignment I had to evaluate the policy and its effectiveness and suggest ways that it could be more effective and I found that very uncomfortable. And this is, I feel like, indicative of a problem with a lot of development because like I am coming from a Western country and I am in no way an expert on like Indian politics or the situation of indigenous people in India or like the Ministry of Tribal Affairs and the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change like I don't know what's going on there and I'm expected to like evaluate how well their policy is operating and I can read reports and stuff but it's a big problem and this is similar to to what you were talking about like with the US military how we sort of like see it as like handed down from God and it's like inherently functional and inherently valid and this is like something that isn't seen a lot in development is people see oh. I think the dryer's done. People go into developing countries and they think inherently something is broken and they have the answer to it and inherently these people are less competent because they come where they come from and this is changing and there's a lot of really really good movements that are happening in development but this is still a big issue that we have. So my video on Monday was uh, kind of frazzled and it wasn't very well thought out and I want to clarify some points really quickly. One of the points I made particularly I think was very ill-fated which was like my comparing environmental injustice to like racial injustice and racism. I thought about this for a week now and I think that this is more sort of like what I was thinking and trying to articulate with um, that video. This is coming from the perspective of someone who's attending a large university in the United States of America but I feel like most college students in the US have to take some kind of like sociology class just as part of their gen ed requirement and in those classes usually they get some kind of toolkit and like rudimentary vocabulary to talk about like racial injustice and I feel like that doesn't exist with environmental injustices because I and like no one around me has like a vocabulary to, to verbalize and to analyze and to discuss like environmental injustices and like the system of environmental injustice and it's so frustrating because it's not like it's less valid than racial injustice. However, the discourse I feel like is newer. And so it's and so the tools the tools just aren't there for people who don't study it to discuss it well. Um, and it's it's so that really frustrates me. That really frustrates me because I feel like without a vocabulary and without a toolkit, it's really hard to think critically about your actions and about the system and to like affect change. Um, and I feel like it's something that should be there but isn't there and it makes me so frustrated. And I agree that environmental injustice, you don't see it. Um, you're never going to meet the people that it affects. But it's also never discussed and I feel like if it was discussed more, you would bring... We've talked about this in the class that I'm TAing a bit. How if you bring the victim closer, it's harder to like perpetrate an obedience that like is detrimental to someone and I feel like talking about the injustice sort of inherently brings the victim closer but that we just don't have the toolkit or the vocabulary for it and it's really frustrating I don't remember what but you said something in your video that made me think about like previous oh yeah I remember what it was you were talking about like how it was the system that we didn't build 
but we are left and it's in our hands now and it makes me so angry because I feel like it's very ubiquitous to say like oh this is a problem that we are creating or have created for future generations to remedy and it's it just makes me really angry it just makes me really angry because I feel like it's not just a problem that we need to solve it's a problem that we also have to build all of the tools to fix uh, and it makes me really really angry and really frustrated uh, and it feels it feels very insurmountable of a, it feels like a very insurmountable problem and maybe it's just because like I get a lot of questions about this as someone in agriculture people ask me questions that I know the answer to a lot that I feel like are important things but are just never discussed on a public level where everyone gets access to this information uh, it's just not there even though I think it's really important or even like a like a large minority of people get access to the information um, like people ask me like what the actual deal with pesticides is and I feel like that's an important piece of knowledge that you shouldn't have to get a whole bachelor's degree to understand because it's it's not that complicated but we just want to like separate people from the processes that build our economy so thoroughly <laughs> and it just it really frustrates me and I think that this is something that should be easier to talk about than it is however like you do have to put where we are now at least you have to put a lot of energy into it and you're right and I I understand you made like that little text pop up where you talked about how you like it would just be like a whole lifestyle overhaul and there would be so much energy put into it and I feel like that is part of this problem of like us not having a toolkit because it shouldn't be this difficult um, and it shouldn't like in environmental change shouldn't be inaccessible to people who aren't wealthy I feel like um, or to people who don't have leisure time uh, because then it's then it's completely useless basically